Okay, hello everyone. It is Caden from Boss Caden Plays here, doing a special video once a year. Except, oops, it's a day late. <laughs> How could that happen? Um, uh, because I forgot. We're not gonna point that out though. So, uh, my notes are over there. This is gonna be kind of just a little bit of a ramble, but uh, these are my top ten favorite games of 2018. And let's just get going. So, first we have Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Uh, this was developed by, let's see, hmm. uh, basically published by the Pokemon Company Nintendo. I don't really know. I'm not a huge Pokemon fan, but this is a great starter game. Um, I always want to get into Pokemon, but I just, 3DS games, I just kind of hard for me to get into them so with pokemon let's go pikachu it was a very easy game to get into because it had a lot of basic mechanics uh the most notable one being the capturing system so instead of battling pokemon to capture them you actually just pokemon go it you know like pretend this is a phone just boop. and there you go that's how you capture them but there was also times when you did do the normal battle thing with your own Pokemon. And since those were a lot more rare, it made it like really enhanced the experience, I guess. It made them a lot more interesting because there's not as often like you're just wandering and oh look I have to do a long battle. Uh also uh I like this feature where uh they don't they don't normally sh show up on the screen. In, like in the grass in like the 3ds versions or the DS or Game Boy versions at all they just appear you run the grass and oh no you're they're fighting uh, a Pokemon in this game you see them in the grass so you can avoid them if you don't want to which is really nice uh, the graphics are a lot nicer too they're not stuck to like a 3ds because I mean the 3DS isn't the most powerful thing. The Switch, on the other hand, again, yeah, it's not the most powerful thing, but it's pretty decent, pretty okay. And the graphics are nice, although it only runs at 30 frames per second with minor dips. Uh, overall, a pretty okay game. Uh, that's why it's number 10 on my list. Next, we have number 9, which is... Drum roll, Moss. Yes, Moss. That that great game. So, VR is awesome. And one, it's even better. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. So, and that's a PS VR, PlayStation VR. If you didn't know, and we got the VR starter pack. And Moss is one of the games that were pre-installed on it. See, like I don't have like a physical copy here. It came on a little download sheet, which you know I I hate them because. Look at this giant collection right here. Yeah. I like collecting things, not having pieces of paper. I already have enough of those. Um, I you go to school, you know? Pieces of paper. <laughs> this, this has to be cut out. I need, I need to cut this out. It's getting too long. Okay. So, moss. What's good about it? Well, one, it's a type of plant, and plants are good because they get rid of bad air which causes global warming <laughs> just kidding moss is not a type of plant uh, like when you search moss on google it takes it to a type of plant but moss is actually a video game because this is not a top 10 plants list this is a top 10 video games list uh, moss is just your great starting VR game. It's not a game where you have to be all, oh, yeah, I'm playing VR and like moving around. Because as you know, us gamers, we don't like to exercise. We like to sit down and not exercise and move around at all. So, Moss is kind of just like a game. You sit down, you have the headset on, and you control Quill, the protagonist of the game with the normal DualShock 4 controller 
and you can move your head around. If you want, you can stand up and look around. Look at all the... I, to be honest, I actually do that. The environments are so amazing, and the graphics just are, like, outstanding for a PSVR game. Uh, I just... It takes me forever to get past one part, because I'm just looking at everything, trying to... Oh, look, oh, look at that. Oh, look, look at that tree over there. It's huge. And it's so cool. Like, the graphics are just the best part of the game, probably. Next is storytelling. Um, that's great. The whole story about it, I haven't finished the game, but it has a very unique story, which, you know, is very important nowadays, because most games are just like, hey, someone got lost, go rescue them. This game is different. It's about different sides. So it's not just two, it's just a bunch... That's five. <laughs> Not just two sides, a bunch of different sides of the story. And that is interesting. Next point is how the combat works. Okay, this is surprising. Because normally I'm not one who likes combat in video games. There's a problem with this. Most games have boring combat or combat that's too in-depth that I really don't want to take time to figure out. Uh, examples. Oh, that's right. I don't like those games, so I don't play them. I guess Super Smash Bros. Uh, that's kind of a game that has more in-depth combat, but that's kind of optional. I would say, maybe. I don't know. But Moss has one way of doing it. It's not overly easy and boring like uh, Disney Infinity. <laughs> and it's not overly complicated like like Street Fighter or whatever. I don't. I don't even know what <laughs> Street Fighter is like. I've never played it, but I'm guessing Street Fighter has a lot of complex moves because that's a big part of it. That's why they sell separate controllers. Um, that's what I was saying about Moss, though. It just has these one thing you have to learn: you attack three times, then you move out of the way really quick. The enemy tries to attack you and misses. If you do that perfectly, you can go back in for three more hits, and that kills it. Now, I'm at the beginning part of the game, so I don't really know if that changes in the future. I'm about maybe a quarter through, maybe a little bit less. So I don't really know how this game will evolve its combat, but at the beginning, or the, the first quarter, and it seems pretty balanced in the complexity and the boringness of it. Uh... Moss just has a really good atmosphere as well. It kind of goes into the graphics. It just looks beautiful. And the animation is just spot on. You can't even tell that it's not real sometimes. Uh, another thing I like is the how it presents its story. So sometimes you're in, like I'm guessing, like a library or church. You're reading a book. You're sitting in a chair. It's this giant building, like, you look up and it's like, ugh, it's amazing, and you just, it's huge. You, obviously, your room is not as big as that room, but it just seems like you could go out and explore, and that's great. In front of you is a book. You press, like, R2 or L2. You can, like, flip the page, and that's how you, like, move on to the next story sequence. Overall, pretty great game. Pro I'm probably going to review... All ten of these games on this list in their own separate videos, which are more in depth. But for now, that's a basic, bite-sized review of Moss. Great game. Recommend you get it if you have a PSVR. And if you don't have a PSVR, I recommend you get that too. If you don't have a PS4, um, they're pretty cheap with the VR bundle, so I definitely recommend picking one up. Next, we have. Woohoo! A game that is actually right behind me. Hello Neighbor, Hide and Seek. Oh, look, I'm a kid. I like Hello Neighbor. <laughs> so, Hello Neighbor, Hide and Seek, if you didn't know, is a prequel to, get ready for it, Hello Neighbor. So, I have these both of these games on PS4 here. Hello Neighbor, it's an okay game. Many flaws, not on this list. You know, this did come out this year. Not on the list, though. On the other hand, this 
well, to be to clarify, this was a port of a PC version that came out last year. This game came out on all platforms this year, December seventh, and this tells the story of what happened before this game. And if you've ever gotten pretty in depth in this game, you'll know you want to know the story. It's a very interesting kind of thing. Like you never know what's gonna happen. So this game tells it really nice. It doesn't directly go out and say, "Oh, this happened." Oh, and this happened. I'm gonna try not to spoil it because if you are interested in this series, play Hello Neighbor One first, okay? Then play Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek. Don't play Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek first. It's gonna ruin Hello Neighbor. Uh, so, the story. A lot of these games are very story-driven, but Hall and Neighbor Hide and Seek has four different worlds. There are five worlds. Five total worlds and then four big worlds. So, the last one is pretty small. Not going to spoil anything else, but it's just not as big. So, the four uh, first worlds are a, like, savanna thing, which is where you have to capture stuffed animals or that are scattered around while your brother is dressed up as a lion chasing you. So if you don't mind, this game is called Hide and Seek. It's because you're trying to find things and your brother is trying to find you. Uh, and then you have to hide from him so you don't get caught. The next world is a police world where you are a robber and your brother is a police and you're trying to get money. But they look like V-Bucks. Yeah, this is not good. I I'll even show you. Look, look. those are V-Bucks. That's a V-Buck. Um, the third world is this fire land, and the whole world is on fire. I'm not going to spoil why, but the point is, it is, and you need to put out some fires and rescue some civilians, or some stuffed human being animals things. You need to rescue those, put them in a basket, like all the other worlds, and you're all set. Moving on to the fourth world. It is an ice world. Uh, you collect brains in this world. Oh, goodness, what happened here? We went from collecting stuffed animals to collecting brains. Wonderful. That's just wonderful. Um, and there's just zombies everywhere. It's freezing cold. It, it's very, like, a post-apocalyptic kind of setting for that fourth world. That's when everything kind of goes downhill completely. Well, not really. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm trying not to. It's hard. Okay? Um, so, this game does have some flaws, but I really do enjoy this game. This game, I was waiting for ever since it was announced. I was like, oh, I need to get this thing. I loved Hello Neighbor 1, and I'm, I need to get the story from Hello Neighbor 1. So, Hello Neighbor 1 was your neighbor, you were trying to get into your neighbor's house, and your neighbor is trying to get you out of his house. This one is where you actually play as the neighbor's uh, daughter, and the neighbor's son is trying to chase you. So, that is slightly different to the first game, where it's not as, it's more lighthearted, I would say, because it's not serious. He's not... He's playing with you. He, then This neighbor's trying to kill you. These kids are playing together um, not because they're trying to kill each other, just because they're having fun and they're bored. The flaws come in when you look in the game mechanics section of this game. It, it's very buggy. They released one patch for this, fixed a few things, added a few features, or like two, one or two features. Hints are very important. I'm glad they added hints, because some of these puzzles are just like, Whoa. Whoa. what happened here? What what did, what did you do, tiny build, or dynamic pixels? What? <laughs> but, there are many bugs, as I've said. When you go into hiding places, sometimes the brother just hangs around there for a good two minutes. And I've heard about this, I was like, I haven't seen that before. And then once I started playing more, it's just like, yeah, this is an obvious issue that has been around, and they haven't fixed it. So, think what you want. This game, 
it's for some people. If you like Hello Neighbor, you'll like this game. If you like interesting stories, you'll like this game or this whole series. And if you just like fun puzzle things, you'll like this a lot. Cause this, if you want something to like sit down and think without hints, <laughs> you can be satisfied with this. So I give this uh, maybe out of ten. Okay, next game is Onrush, which I also have digitally. Planning on getting it physically soon, but right now it's digital, so we're going to have to deal with that for now. What is good about Onrush? Well, th there's a lot of answers. My favorite part is the different game modes. The one I play the most is the one where you just try to get the most laps around that's it. Try to be the one who destroys the most cars, gets the most points, and gets the most distance, I guess. Finish the race first, but while also making other people finish last. There are different cars that are very unique. They have all different power-ups. Uh, let's see. The graphics look pretty realistic for a racing game. I mean that because you go fast. It's They can't like waste their time drawing like little things because that, that uses a lot of resources up in the making process and in the computer process uh... in the rendering process that's what i was looking for rendering process so they did a really good job with the optimization of this game uh... the gameplay i love it this game is addicting and the way that it works is you just once you die wait like three seconds you're right back in so there's no long waiting there's no Breath of the Wild loading screens when you die. You just wait three seconds and you respawn. Not even behind. You respawn like uh, in front of other people. So you're not last just because you died. Which is a nice feature because you die sometimes. You die a lot. Especially if you're playing with good people. Not to say I'm bad. Just saying that I'm not the best. Okay? Not the best. I admit it. I admit it, guys. Um, but it's it's a solid racing game. I would recommend. You should get it. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Give good good on rush review. No, not really, because it's gonna be a separate video. I haven't played it too much, so I don't really have that much to say about it. Sorry. But next game is a game a lot of people like. It's a certain collection. It's about a dragon who may or may not be purple. It's Spire Reignited Trilogy. Now, a little history about myself. Um, I love Skylanders games, okay? I, I just love them. They're amazing. But they stopped making them for a little bit. Um, but when I heard that Toys for Bob, one of the developers of the Skylanders games... The four, four out of the six Skylanders games they made were making a new game based off of Spyro, which is a main character in some of the Skylanders games. I was like, whoa, I can't wait to play it. My dad has been like, oh, Spyro's a great game. You should play it. And I was like, well, I finally get to have the chance to play it. comes with the original three games that were on PS1, now remastered in HD. Uh, it comes with Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, and Spyro 3 Year of the Dragon. All of these games are great. In my opinion, um, I haven't played too much of them, but the second one is probably the best one. The third one is the most uh, varied, but they had they passed the third one on to a different developer, uh, Senzaru Games, while Toys for Bob was looking over them seeing how it was going, but it didn't feel as, uh, what's the word? It felt too unique. It didn't feel all the same, and that's something that hurt it a lot. Uh, I love collectibles, though. This game is three collectibles in one, and if you didn't know, this game comes with three different trophy sets. That means you, by this one game, you can get up to three Platinums on PlayStation 4. 
I don't know about an Xbox One. Uh, I do have one, but I don't have this game on Xbox One, so I don't know how it works that way. But I do know that you can get three Platinums because there's three trophy sets. Uh, collectibles uh, include collecting things. So, <laughs> yeah, no duh. Uh, you collect these things called uh, gems, or, yeah, probably called gems, they're like little red gems, and they're, they're all different colors. There's, um, dragons you free, because, well, in the first game you free dragons, I'm not sure about the second and third, uh, but, yeah, you do free dragons in the first one, and graphics, moving on to graphics, they're great, it's an HD remaster of all these games, so you can go back and play them, and they'll be like, Oh yeah, this I remember this area, and then you play this game. You're like, oh yeah, I remember this area, but it just looks a ton better. There are so many extra, just tiny little details, like when you're playing a Spyro. Okay, you can play as different characters in the third game, but when you're playing a Spyro and you breathe fire, the grass turns like like it gets burnt, which is really interesting. Uh, I like the fact that you can burn sheep. That's fun. I like burning sheep, okay? And I don't don't call mainstream media on me, but I do like burning sheep. Um as far as bugs and glitches and game performance, normally when you group those three things together, it doesn't mean too good. Performance is okay. It goes up to 30 frames per second. It's not 60, which is a problem sometimes when you're doing some platforming sections, but sometimes it's completely fine. Uh, there's really good motion blur. It's not like terrible, uh, I don't know, Sonic Forces motion blur. It's not anything like that. But for bugs and glitches, I played like the first 10 minutes of me playing. I already got stuck in a thing and I had to quit out of the game and go back in it. It didn't crash or anything. I just got stuck when I was just collecting gems, which is something that shouldn't happen, even though this game got two patches, didn't fix it. Speaking of getting patches, there might be, the, uh, I don't know if you heard of this, there's there's a controversy. Original three games mastered. Under that, it says, requires content download right here. Do you know what that means? You need to download other updates to play this game properly. reason is, because only the first game is included on this disc right here. This disc only has the first game and some basic parts of the th uh, second and third games. The update, which is huge, huge, has the second and third games. And a few bug fixes and the like. It, it says on here you need 55 gigabytes minimum, but that has now risen to like 60 or something. So... If you have enough room on your PS4, definitely recommend this if you're a classic Spyro fan. Or recommend this, like Skylanders games, recommend this nice collectible just like Skylanders games. And if you're new to video gaming, this is a good place to start. I mean, not that you're new to gaming and watching my channel anyways, but good place to start. Moving on. Now, this game right here in my hand that I'm not going to show you yet is a game that on uh, most people's lists is way higher. I mentioned it earlier in the video. If you were paying attention, you know exactly what it is. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch. Okay? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have... Okay, basically, I sort of like Smash games, and I sort of don't. Part of me doesn't like them because it's too competitive. I just like to chill out and play something. Smash Bros. on the Wii U didn't have a story mode. That was a mistake. I know why, but it still was a mistake. Same thing on the 3DS. Those are the only two ones I've ever played. So, when this, I heard, has all of these characters, and on the back it says everyone is here, all of these characters in. This is every single character plus more in it. With a story mode... I was like, okay, this is going to be my new favorite Smash game. Now, here's the thing. I haven't played, like, classic Smash or, like, normal Smash that much in this game. 
What I have been playing is World of Light. That thing is amazing. I like how there's different paths. Once uh, you go on a certain area, you can fight a custom-ish character. So it, it's like, uh, let's see, what's what's a good example? I'm going to think of one. Okay, I just thought of one. When, when you're fighting uh, an Octoling, there are actually just four Inklings. And that's like really creative. Sort of. <laughs> that's... That's the one I can think of now. I'm tired, okay? It's the day after New Year's Eve. So I'm a little bit... I was tired. But, yeah. There are a lot of creative examples. And some of the guys even have power-ups, special coloring uh, effects, weapons that are different from their main guy. And they just act as a different guy from another Nintendo game or another Nintendo character that isn't in Smash to begin with. And those are called spirits. And when you can collect spirits to improve your team and fight stronger guys, it's, it's just really interesting collecting all of them. Because as you know, I like collecting things. Um, so, yeah, I just like collecting the spirits. And it's just really fun. So, I don't really have that much else to say. Uh, graphics, I mean, best for a Smash game. Except the shadows are a little bit, ugh, what happened here. But... Other than that, it's very solid game. I would give it a solid game out of 10. It's a must-buy for a Switch, I would say, probably. Unless if you're really little. But you can still get some enjoyment out of it if you're really little. Moving on is an odd game that most people would not put on their list. And let's just say I, <laughs> I like it more than Smash, but most people hate this game. It's by a publisher that not many people like. And no, it's not EA or Activision or... I don't know. Bethesda. Or Konami. Or... Just about anyone now. So, it's, it's outright games. I don't know if you've heard of them. <laughs> but they don't make the best outright games, you could say. So, my game that's better than... This masterpiece is Grail of Scoop, okay? I'm laughing at it now, but I really do like this game. Grail of Scoot is on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. I got it on Switch just because it's portable and whatever. Easy to play with on the go. I mean, it's the easiest to play with on the go because it's the only one you can play with on the go. So, if you don't know what this game is, you're probably just like, what? what is this game? It says Crayola, which is a brand that makes school supplies and a scoot. What is this, a scooter? Yes, you'll be right if you guessed it's a scooter, because as you can see, there are scooters on the front cover. This game really is like Tony Hawk, but with scooters, and Splatoon combined into one game. This game is awesome. Okay, it does not look awesome. This game did not sell that good, as I've heard. You need to give this game a shot. It's really good. Crayola Scoot. Hidden gem. Gem. Not gem. Gem. It's a hidden gem. Hidden gem, okay? I'm gonna... This is a hidden gem. Okay? Graphics are... Really interesting. Uh, yeah, they're graphics. They're, this game is made with Unity, so it's not the best graphics, but it, it, it goes for a certain art style, which I can appreciate. Instead of having two colors that fight, there's, I think, six that fight in one area. There's a huge practice open world thing, and there's levels and different game modes and stuff. There's local uh, split screen play, co-op play, but there is no online play in a game that could perfectly use this. This game would sell probably a lot better if it had online, which is probably the biggest flaw. Other than that, this game is satisfying to play, spreading your... Uh, wax everywhere? What is a Crayola? Because it shows it as, like, ink in the game, but... I guess markers? Spreading your color everywhere and doing tricks. Building up your combo. That's what's fun about this game. You should definitely give it a shot. If you're young, getting it for your kids... Um, just want another game to have on your Switch. It's a great game. Or PS4, Xbox One, but... I think this game is best suited for Switch. Moving on. is another game on Switch. 
but not exclusive to Switch. I also had this on PS4. Uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas. This comes in a giant starter pack, which I will actually get one sec. This is the pack. Game comes inside. And it comes with a bunch of like figures and ships and this grip for your controller. And the way it works, well, first, let's talk about what it is. It's like, everyone calls it this, No Man's Skylander. So, as you know, I love Skylanders. And a big part of why I love Skylanders is the figures. You can put them on the portal and it goes into the game. No Man's Sky, I also like. Proof of I own it. Owning it. Yeah, so No Man's Sky, I like this game. Not as much as most people. I mean, more than most people. Most people don't like this as much as me. This game still has a lot of potential. Uh, Hollow Games and Sean Murray have very, uh, very much improved this a lot since it came out. I actually bought this on New Year's Day in 2016, so I've had this game for exactly two years today. Wow. So, <laughs> this game has potential. It's not there yet. There's still a long way to go. The biggest problem is that it doesn't have a direct story. It has a story, but it's not like go here, go here, it's kind of just open, and then you go to the center, and then eh, that's it. I don't really like that too much. I don't really like games that you just throw you in and go, hey, just do whatever you want. Minecraft was made for that, though, okay, because it's a sandbox game with blocks, but this game doesn't really work as a Minecraft kind of thing. The physics and just stuff, it, it's pretty well programmed, but it just doesn't work for it. So, Starlink... And No Man's Sky, how do they compare? Well, No Man's Sky, as I said, does not have a story. Starlink has a very big story. The reason why I bought Starlink on the Switch first, as you can see, Switch Starter Pack, Switch Game, is because it comes with the Fox thing. And the way that you play Fox is just you put a little thing, comes with the R-Wing, put a little the Star Fox figure, put a little R-Wing, well, not a little thing, it's, it's pretty big, pretty big R-Wing ship on top of it, on the grip. And you can play as those things in the game. It comes with weapons, but the army has built-in weapons. And, yeah. Very interesting game. I'll show you how it works with the controller, the grip. It's just, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so I got all this stuff here. So first, in the grip is, this is just the grip. You slide your Joy-Cons in here, and you put uh, your figure here. My figure of choice is uh, Fox from Star Fox, Nintendo Switch exclusive. It unlocks a new content. Now, you want a ship. So you can put your ship on. And as you can see, there are side things here. So these are weapons. This is like a fire and ice weapon. Now let's say you want different weapons. Bear with me. Here I have a different weapon. It's uh, like a sunbeam thing. I have a ton of them over there, but I don't feel like going over there. <laughs> so you just slide it on here, as you can see. Get a close-up view. And now that weapon's in the game. You can mix and match them, so I can have this ice weapon from earlier. Just put that there. Uh, take this one off. That the whole ship, I don't know. I, oh, that wasn't in all the way. Oopsie. As you can see, I'm not really up for doing this properly. Okay. So, that's how it works. Repairs in the game. Graphics, pretty good for Switch. Um, very unique environments. And I like the concept of, like, this evil thing trying to take over the world and you have to, like, counter them. That's interesting. It's a little bit pricey, because <laughs> these ships, so you just swap all the ships if you want, 25 bucks each characters, uh, the, the pilots, I believe, are nine books, and the weapon packs, I think, are twelve books. I don't, it might be the other way around, but this game is not a, it's, it's a hefty investment, but if you re really like Skylanders games, or if you like Gloom and Sky, or you like both of them, like me, uh, you'll like this game. Moving on is another VR game. This game blew me away. I played the like a partial demo thing in the Playroom VR, which is a free thing that you get when you buy a PSVR headset. 
and it is Astrobot Rescue Mission. This game, oh my god. This game is perfect. Except the fact you have to exercise, but other than that, it's perfect. So, there are six worlds. Or no, 20 worlds. Six, no, 20 locations, six bosses. Sorry. Um, four players. You can play four players, even though not everyone gets to use the VR headset, but you can, like, switch it around. Uh, it's a nice co-op game. You can play on the TV and the headset. Uh, and so you control it with a DualShock 4, and you have a robot that moves around. His name is Astrobot. He's this guy. You have to save other Astrobots that went everywhere because a ship exploded because an evil alien ruined everything. As evil aliens do. So you have to control your Astrobot and go everywhere. And here's the thing. You don't have a camera movement with the right stick. You actually walk around and you see everything. You 360 degrees, you walk around, you look over here, you look everywhere, right? You look up, look down look all around um, and you auto move when he's far enough away that you start moving that's nice so you don't have to like block because you'll run out of space eventually there's a cool mode where you get coins and every like 100 coins you get to use a like prize claw thing and you get something drops down you open it up and you can decorate your spaceship with it so that's that's pretty cool uh, Graphics are amazing, okay? The locations that I've played, I haven't played the whole thing, but I, I want to, are so varied. So, like, one minute you're in this jungle, and the next you're in the Grand Canyon, and the next you're on the moon. Who would have thought? You're in a city, you're in... Wh wh where else are you in? You're in... Russia, I... You're in everywhere. Okay? Th th this game... You're not going to get bored with it. Six bosses. First boss. I'm not going to spoil. But let's just say, when you first see that thing, it's like, whoa. That's pretty big. And scary. A little bit. Not, not like, yo. Well, that's more like what it is. So, I recommend this game. Highly, I highly recommend this game. You need to get this if you have a VR. If you have a PS4 and you don't have a VR headset... This game and Moss comes in the starter pack, uh, one of them at least. And so you get two games and a VR headset for the price of one VR headset. Not a bad deal. Next and final, my best game of the year is... Guess what it is? That's right. I, this is unexpected. It's Fallout 76. Yes, that's my favorite game of the year. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You think I'm... Fallout 76? No. No. Again, this is a little bit ridiculous. It's Lego The Incredibles. I... This game, I love so much. It has Wally in it. That's not the only reason why I love it, but it's a pretty... That goes in my top ten reasons why I love this, which will be a video. I'm sure it will be. But, there's Wally in it. Other Pixar characters, like Lightning McQueen, and Sully from Monsters University, oh, and even the rat from like Ratatouille or whatever. Yeah, they're all here. Uh, so this follows The Incredibles 2 first, and then goes to The Incredibles 1. And there's a total of 12 levels plus a bonus level, which is amazing. Okay, I'm going to tell you, it's amazing. I have 70% of this game complete. I'm not done completing it. Yeah, I was playing it this morning and yesterday and the day before. I play it all the time. Okay, I'm trying to 100% this. I'm trying to get the platinum on this. Get my second platinum, or third. Depends if I beat Job Simulator before this, but this game, you need to get it, okay? It's on the Switch and Xbox One as well as PS4. I personally like to get my games on PS4 or Switch, depends on which one. I do have an Xbox One, but this is my Xbox One collection as of right now. Kind of small, but there's only a few things I want to get on it. Console exclusives and games to play with my friends, that's it. Uh, yeah, and yes, I do have friends. If you remember that meme from Minecon, yes, I do have friends. So, graphics in this game, they're Lego Incredibles, it's amazing. Music makes you feel like you're there. 
overall the game design is just really well thought out. Red bricks are really easy to get in this game, and that's what I like. Because I got a billion studs yesterday, so that's something. Studs are this game's currency, if you didn't know. And the uh, multipliers, red brick multipliers, that's what you get. All you do is just the complete a crime wave, which are like mini story segments, which I really like. They take place in the hub world, though. And they have some frame rate problems. Other than that, the game is running pretty smoothly compared to other LEGO games. As you know, the, the LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 on PS4, I made a video or a live stream about that. Is a pretty bad running game. But, yes, LEGO The Incredibles, extremely, highly, highly recommend this. I, a lot of people are surprised that this is my number one game, but it is. So, deal with it. Dab. <laughs> Okay, that is all for my list. I hope you did enjoy this 40-minute video. Oh my god, my phone's gonna run out of storage space. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so, I'm not gonna edit this that much. I mean, like, cut things up. I'm just gonna, probably gonna put some overlay things. It's late. I need to make this video. And hope you had a nice New Year's Eve. Oh, it's too late to say that. But... Have a wonderful new year. 2019, hopefully, is a better year for my channel. We don't get any more community guidance strikes for no reason. By the way, that expires today, so I can finally do stuff again. Um, yeah, I'm excited. The first video I'm probably going to make after this is 10 reasons why I love this game, so stay tuned. Okay? So, thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you next time. It's Kaden from Boss Kitten Place signing out or whatever. Goodbye. Have a great day. Or whatever. Wait, what? It's not time. Well, okay, just just goodbye. Keep watching. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Like buy my merch. <laughs> I don't have merch.